Why are my photos too dark? Why are my photos too bright? This is a question I get asked time and time again. So let's try and fix it right now in this video. Exposure for beginners. Hi, Paul here from Photo Genius. Now photography is the art of capturing light. If you're taking photos and they're too bright, they are overexposed. And this simply means that you've captured too much light. If your pictures are too dark, they're underexposed. And that means you haven't recorded or captured enough light. And I wanna show you how you can control light by using a camera like this one here. Now there's three things that affect light. ISO, aperture, shutter collectively known as the exposure triangle. Now it may sound a bit crazy, but taking a good photo is a bit like making a good cup of tea. You've got to get the balance right between three things. You need water, you need just the right amount of milk, and for me, time. I like my tea strong, so I leave the tea bag in a little bit longer. And those three things combined make for a great cup of tea. I'm from the UK, so I'm a big tea drinker. Now taking a great photo is a balance between three things again, ISO, aperture, and shutter speed get the balance right and you get a great photo. Now in auto, you don't get any say in this. You don't get any control over these features. So for this video, I really recommend putting the camera into the manual mode. Now with the camera in the manual mode, we get to control the camera functions like aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. I'm gonna show you how to do this first on a Canon camera, then I'll show you how to do it on a Nikon camera, and of course in a moment, I'll show you how to combine those things so we get the balance right and we get a great picture. So let's start by talking about ISO, which relates to the sensor and the electronics inside of the camera. Think of it a bit like the brightness control on a TV. Increase the brightness, brighter picture. Decrease the brightness, darker picture. Inside of these cameras, there's a function called ISO. If you increase the number, you can effectively make your image brighter. Decrease the number, your picture will effectively get darker. So if you're taking photos maybe in the evening when the sun's going down, you may of course increase the ISO because it's darker and you wanna make the image brighter. But be careful with this one because ISO affects image quality. If you push the ISO too high, your image will start to look a bit grainy. It's called digital noise and it's not really ideal. So for that reason, my ISO default is 200. Or as I like to say, where possible, ISO, keep it low. To change the ISO value on a Canon camera, locate the ISO button, which is on the top of this particular camera, then select the option you want. I'm gonna go for 200, which is my default, press set, and you're done. To change the ISO on the Nikon camera, look for the I button on the back of the camera, use the multi-selector to move over to the ISO function, press OK, and then select the ISO you want. I'm going for my default ISO, which is 200. Press the shutter button lightly to go back to your normal screen. An alternative way of changing ISO on the Nikon cameras is to hold the function button down on the side of the camera and then rotate the rear dial on the back of the camera. This is a much more effective way of changing the ISO. So with the ISO set to 200, let's now turn our attention to aperture. Now aperture is a function of the lens and is a great and very effective way of controlling light. Inside your lens is an aperture, which is a hole that you can adjust. Make the hole bigger, you let more light through the lens, and this of course can make your picture brighter. But if you make the hole smaller, you let less light through the lens, and this is a way that you might wanna make your picture a bit darker. And if I hold this lens out and adjust the aperture, hopefully you can see that there. The position of the aperture is shown on the back of the camera as an F number. These numbers can be a little bit confusing because they kinda of work back to front. When your aperture is wide open, it's not a big number, it's a small number, typically around about 3.5. When you close the aperture down and let less light through the lens, it's not a small number, it's a big number, and on the average lens, it's about f36. So the numbers can be confusing, but of course with practice, you'll soon get used to them. Now let me show you how easy it is to change the aperture on these cameras. Adjusting the aperture on the Canon camera is very easy. Locate the aperture value button marked AV on the camera, hold it down and turn the dial on the top of the camera. Dial into the right for the bigger f number, dial into the left for the smaller f numbers, which again means the aperture is wider. Changing the aperture value on a Nikon is easy. Hold down the aperture button on the top of the camera, turn the dial on the rear of the camera, and you can change the aperture value. 
dial into the right for the larger F numbers, dial into the left for the smaller F numbers, which makes the aperture wider. Easy. So we've looked at the ISO, we've looked at the aperture, now it's time to talk about the shutter. Now, the shutter sits behind the lens. Think of it like a door. At the moment it's closed, and that means that there is no light getting into this camera until I press the shutter button on the top of the camera. When I do, you'll hear a noise. That's the shutter opening and closing. And at the moment, I've got selected a very fast shutter speed. Now, if you're taking photos outdoors, maybe on a bright day, that's probably what you wanna be using because you want the shutter to open, let light into the camera, but close before you let too much light in. So fast shutter speeds are great on bright days. But of course, you might be taking a photo indoors or maybe later into the evening when the sun's going down. Not a problem. You can slow the shutter down, which means the shutter is gonna be open longer. And this will, of course, let more light into the camera. I've selected a shutter speed here of one tenth of a second. And you'll clearly hear there two clicks, which is the shutter opening and closing. Now, of course, eventually the sun goes down. It's now nighttime. There's less light available. Again, not a problem. You can slow the shutter down even more. So I'm now selecting a one second exposure and this will allow more light into the camera. The great thing about the shutter is there is such a huge range of shutter speeds available that you've got something for the brightest of days, but equally dull afternoons and then nighttime. From the fastest shutter speeds to the slowest shutter speeds, definitely shutter is the most effective way of controlling light. And I'm gonna show you how to do it on these cameras. To adjust the shutter speed on a Canon camera, you locate the dial on the top of the camera, dial into the right will increase the shutter speed. And of course, dialing to the left will slow the shutter down, so the shutter will be open longer. Changing the shutter speed on a Nikon camera is as easy as turning the dial. Dial to the right for the faster shutter speeds. Dial to the left for the slower shutter speeds. So now we know what the ISO, aperture and shutter can do, and we also know how to adjust them. But how do you get the balance right? How do you know when you're taking a photo what shutter, aperture, ISO combination to use? Well, you could go and buy a light meter like this one, and you can use this to measure light. But the good news is you don't need to, because there's a light meter built into these cameras. And when you know how to use it, you can pretty much nail your exposure every single time. It's super easy to use, and I'm gonna start with the Canon camera first. Looking at the back of the camera, our ISO is 200. Remember, ISO, keep it low. The F3.5 tells us the aperture is wide open, and the shutter speed at the moment is pretty quick at one one thousandth of a second. Now below the numbers, we find our light meter. You will see there is a zero marker in the middle, and then we have a plus one, two, and three, and a minus one, two, and three. The plus side is overexposure, the minus is underexposure, and we want to aim for the zero. But at the moment, the meter is asleep. To wake the meter up, we simply press the shutter button lightly, and you'll see a marker appear, which at the moment is sitting below the minus three. This tells us our picture, if we take it, will be underexposed. Let's wake the meter up again. Notice it's an arrow pointing to the left, indicating we are seriously underexposing this image. So that means we need to get more light into the camera. Now the main reason for the underexposure is this shutter speed is too high, so what we're going to do is slow the shutter down by waking up the meter and dialing to the left. Now what you'll see is the shutter speed is slowing down and the marker starts to move to the middle. Now once the marker has hit the middle spot, we should get a decent exposure. And there's our picture. Now if I turn our light source down and take another light meter reading, we'll see that no surprises, we are now underexposing. Well, we can compensate for this by just slowing the shutter down a bit more. The markers back to the middle. And again, we will get a decent exposure. So moving on to the Nikon camera, we've got our ISO low here at 200, our aperture wide open at 3.5, and the shutter speed at the moment is quite slow at 1 15th of a second. Now if we take a look at the meter, you'll see a minus to the left, a plus to the right, and a zero marker in the middle, and underneath the uh, meter here, a series of dotted lines and an arrow pointing to the right, indicating that we will overexpose if we take the picture now. To reduce the overexposure, all we've got to do is increase the shutter speed. 
So we dial to the right with the dial, the shutter speed increases and the markers start to move to the middle. Once they're in the middle, we should get a decent exposure. And there's our picture. Now once again, we're going to reduce the light levels in the room. You will see the markers react on the light meter because there's less light available. So to fix the underexposure, this time we're going to slow the shutter down. Once the markers are in the middle, we take the picture and there's our next photo. Now it's important to note that the light meter is affected by any change in the shutter, aperture or ISO. If I adjust the shutter speed, you will see this affects the exposure and it's shown by the light meter. And likewise, if I change the aperture, you will also see this affects the light meter. And equally, if I make a change to the ISO, then the meter responds accordingly. As I said at the beginning of the video, a well exposed image is getting the balance right between the three things that make up the exposure triangle. Now shooting in the manual mode as we've been doing in this video is very different to shooting in the auto mode. You get more control over the camera. You also get to be more creative with the cameras. And this is really the way these cameras are designed to be used. But to help you, I've put together some tip sheets. They're on the Photogenius website. I'll put some links in the description below the video. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video and picked up some great tips. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on future videos. And of course, you can leave your comments, questions and suggestions down below. I hope to see you again sometime soon. See ya.